and welcome to the Creative Entrepreneur Show, which is all about helping you grow your creative business online. I am Reagan. And I'm Haley. And we are so happy to have you here. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Let us know where you're tuning in from, especially if you're watching that replay. If you're watching from the future, we do not discriminate against our time advantage friends. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about the five key income streams for creative entrepreneurs. Five. All right. Yeah, so kind of sounds like a lot. There's a lot of ways you can make money as a creative entrepreneur, so as a writer, as a musician, whatever it is that you are creating. Even just a but, business owner. I mean, if you're just if you're simply, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. All this, yeah, everything still applies to, to all that as well. Everything. Yeah. But first, it's time for the book of the week. What is it? It is How to Create an Unbreakable Writing Habit by the remarkable Aaron and Kathleen Ram. The other ones uh, who are mainly responsible for writing Kingdom Pen right now. And so you can grab this book. Just go to kingdompen.org and right there on the homepage you can sign up for it. And this is a really fantastic guide that we wanted to make this the actual book of the week because it's kind of like a mini ebook. And it really does an awesome job walking you through um, how you can create for yourself an unbreakable writing habit, which is the foundation for becoming a, a writer. But everything in there applies for like pretty much anything, any of any habit you want to create. If you want to create a music creation habit or just um, a drawing habit or just anything for your business, if you want to create an unbreakable habit that's going to help you generate the results that you want to see, then this is an awesome guide for you and it's completely free. So just go to kingdompen.org to grab that for yourself. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really great, it's a really great book. And that actually leads us into our quick tip of the week, yes. which is to schedule your creation time and stick to it like Gorilla Glue sticks to a TikTok woman's hair. Oops, that's the wrong video. <laughs> I have that video somewhere. Yep. Now, this 40-year-old uh, woman, she sprayed the Gorilla Glue into her hair, replacing her normal hairspray. Then last Thursday, she did a TikTok video, and she says that she used Gorilla Glue. Yeah. Do not do that. But you Don't do, that, do but... want to create a writing habit that sticks just like Gorilla Glue would stick to your hair so that the only way to remove it is with surgery or something. So... <laughs> That is what you want to do. Know. You want to schedule your writing time or really that could be creative time. Yeah. Any creative time, whether it's, you know, creating music, writing blog posts, um, creating videos, any, anything that um, would help further your creative business. So why do we need a schedule time? Can't we just do it when we feel like it? Well, here's the thing. If we leave... <laughs> If we leave uh, that responsibility to our emotions and to just, you know, I motivation in uh, quotations, um, because we can feel like we're going to do it and be like, yeah, I'll get to it when I feel like it. But when do we actually ever really feel like doing it on a consistent basis? Never. We, we, we never do um, because we're our our emotions and motivation is unreliable right it really is. certain times but it's not consistent yeah and consistency is the hallmark of greatness Ooh, i like that so be sure to schedule your writing time and write consistently and this is going to you know lead into the tips because um before you can actually make an income, you need to be creating consistent content. And a great example that we like to look to and we, we um, kind of point to a lot, a good example is Chris Fox. And aspire to be. <laughs> yeah. 
um, in a recent, because he's making, right, he's an independent author, probably never heard of him, yet he's making well over six figures a year just from his stories, not to mention his his teaching brand. And in a recent recent video he did, he which was maybe a couple weeks ago, so he's probably written more by now, but he mentioned that he's already written 185,000 words around around that amount, amount so far this year, right? So we're in early mid-ish March. And so basically the beginning of, by the beginning of March, he had already in two, in two months, he had already written 185,000 words this year. And so. Excuse me while I go hide in the corner and feel like a failure. <laughs> right. So I think, I think so many, I mean, I don't know if you, if you have this, if you had this mindset, but I had this mindset when I was a teen writer thinking like, it's going to be like being a successful writer is kind of about catching lightning in the bottle or, or getting struck by lightning. It's kind of like, um, you just have to write that really great, that one great story, that one great book, you put it out there and it's, it's going to blow up. Right. And if it's good enough, you know, it's, it's also, it's only, it's just needs to be good enough and then it's going to blow up and everyone's going to read it and you're going to make, mm-hmm. you know, make your, build your author career from that. Same thing with music, you know, maybe you think you're going to put out that one album or that one single and that's going to hit off and that's going to explode. But that's just so rare that you really don't want to be, you don't want to count on that. So, I mean, um, my, my bar was even lower than that. I was just like, man, if I get published, if I get, you know, a traditional public publishing house to, to take one of my books, right. But that's no guarantee. That's no guarantee of success either. In fact, no, it's not. We're convinced self-publishing is the way to go in 2021 and the future. Um, and a lot of authors are seeing it that way. And so, that's probably a whole, that's a whole other sub, separate episode, probably. <laughs> but, um, Let's not go that, down that rabbit hole. <laughs> right. But the reality is the way that you, basically you make an income and, and build a career in this day and age is consistently putting out content, consistently publishing books, consistently publishing music, because, you know, there's different you know, niches of readers out there or listeners or whatever type of art you're creating. And so what works for them isn't going to work for another type of audience. And so that's why it's so hard to, to create something that has such broad appeal and actually have it work. So the key is, and maybe you can do that eventually, eventually down the road, but getting started, you want to, you know, publish a lot of books in one particular niche, one particular genre, same thing with music. And then, from there, you just you build that following, build that audience. You know that one audience of the one thousand true fans, which I'm pretty sure we've talked about in a previous episode. Yeah, I, I gave that, the example of Taylor Swift. <laughs> right. So yeah, she's not independent, though. Obviously, she's but, not independent. Know, I was just, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but the concept is that if you get one thousand people who are true fans of yours, meaning they're willing to spend money with you um they're usually defined as people that would like buy pretty much anything someone that they're a fan of puts out so let's say they spend a hundred dollars with you a year thousand people that's a hundred thousand dollars a year so that is a pretty good i would say a pretty good income especially for when, when everyone says you know the whole starving artist myth is so frequently repeated maybe that was the case in the past but it's not the case today in the age of the internet and digital mm. marketing and all the tools we have available today. So key is first to build that audience. And that's why we, you know, emphasize grabbing that book on Kingdom Pen, our, our free um, ebook on how to create an unstoppable writing habit, because that is really a foundation. It's first writing a lot of books, getting those published and building that following, building that readership. And then from there you can look to monetize and build out your different income streams. So with that, we'll dive in to the first stream, which is probably obvious, physical products. So that would be like a print book, or if you're a music artist, that would be like um, a vinyl or a CD or even cassettes are kind of starting to come back in. They're coming back. I can't believe they're coming back. And, you know, if you're an artist, you know, you'd have prints of your your mm-hmm. artwork. Giclés. What? A gicle. I, it's, a of, I, it's a type of print. We need to get art, some artist on this show. 
Yeah, yeah we're, we need to see we're hoping to eventually um, get, have some some people on here to interview on this show. Some actual people that are... I know people who have done... Our, uh, a friend of mine, um, she drew characters. Uh, she, like, um, made caricatures of her friends and made them into bookmarks. And I thought that was genius. So, yeah, Absolutely. so... It can't, so yeah, so it can be just, you know, your books, but it could be other physical things too. You could potentially sell, um, that would be related to the genre you're writing in or what your audience likes. That, that comes down to really understanding who your ideal reader is or your ideal listener, your ideal customer, what is it they like? And then what can you provide them uh, in the physical product form that is related to that? And that goes for everything, everything you're, you're going to be what you create is going to depend on who your ideal customer is and what it is they would enjoy. So obviously that is a very key um, income stream right there. People still like to have physical things, um, especially as coming back into fashion more so now. Um, there's a good book that talks about this called, I think it's called Revenge of Analog or Revenge of the Analog or something. And... <laughs> How people, you know, there's a big, there's a big digital trend in the basically early 2000s, but now things are swinging back and people are realizing they like physical products. So notebooks are still popular and where you can see vinyls, vinyls coming back. People like holding books, people like reading books still. So physical products is definitely um, an income stream you want to have. I'm definitely a type of person that likes physical, mm-hmm. physical, at least physical books. Mm-hmm. I like physical books. And then income stream number two is digital products. Obviously, this is another big one. So having that ebook, having an audiobook, audiobooks are huge right now and they're only gonna be getting more they're only getting more and more popular. So um, there's that and as as if you're a music artist, this would be like streaming on all the different streaming services. This would be actually like selling a digital like MP3 file or even your performance rights so if your music is played um publicly or in some venue then you earn a share of those of those rights um so digital is definitely um a income stream you want to take advantage of as well and so right off right physical and digital you want to make sure to cover all your bases there when you're creating your products to some extent is it true that digital is less expensive than physical yeah. So it's easier. Yeah. So there's, there's production costs when you have a physical product, right? You have to pay for actually printing the book where you don't have that when you're selling a digital product. Right. Same thing with the CD, right? You have to pay to actually have the CD printed, but you don't have to do that with a, an MP3, but there is a higher perceived value when your product is physical versus digital. So you can charge more typically for physical products versus digital. And so, yeah, so this could, you know, it doesn't just have to be um, your, like your music or your book too. Maybe you have some other digital things you could offer as well, like a, um, like artwork or something that you could, people can download or something that's related to your books or related to your music. And so um, with all these, it's kind of like the, the only limit is your imagination for what you mm-hmm. could potentially offer in each of these streams. And so that leads to stream number three, which is merch or merchandise, right? So this is a big one now. Um, so this would be like apparel, accessories. So maybe um, you could have like phone cases or something or backpacks or whatever you think that your audience would like. Um, and that could also, yeah, basically this could be just about anything that you can sell in a store. And so you can set this up on your website. You could use a free tool like WooCommerce and you can connect it to a print on demand company like Printful. That's what we used for Kingdom Pen. We had for a while, but since our, since our reboot, we haven't actually um, had our store up, but I know we're wanting to put that up soon. So, but that is a way to monetize. So you can have. Um, and then that's a way to keep the cost down. So you use a free tool like WooCommerce and a print on demand company like Printful. And so what that is, is you can create some kind of t-shirt design or a hoodie design or shoes or whatever, um, notebook, and then you put it for sale on your shop. And then when someone places an order, 
Only then does it go through to Printful and then they just charge you for the cost to actually create that item. And so then you just mark up the price that you're earning a profit and then you sell products that way. And then that company handles the shipping, handles the delivery and all that. You don't have to do any of that stuff. So that's a great way to handle it um, starting out. And so um, that's another great way to monetize your following. Maybe you would want to create a t-shirt with some like catchphrase of your main character that people love or something um, different like inside joke stuff like that that, you, that only your audience would get that stuff that they would really like to buy lines of music different right yeah of course yeah that's you know a merch is big for bands of course you know it's mm -hmm. really, that's a, a well known even an artist like, too artists get their character and, on a shirt mm -hmm. yep, that too. So yeah before we move on I did want to mention um, we do have a question here um, and we will uh, Kelly, we will be answering um, all questions during the Q&A section, um, which will be, it'll yeah, be coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and feature this right now. This is a really good question. We're actually, um, we're actually going to be covering that pretty soon on where a YouTube channel fits into this. Um, so that's a good question. Yeah, we'll definitely be sure to answer that in the Q&A section. So, so stick around. We will yes. answer that. We're almost there. So we're on to stream number four, which is a fan club. So these are really big too. Um, you can create your own membership site or what's really common, what you see is um, people using Patreon. Um, we created our own Patreon as well. The, the advantage of that is, um, again, there's no upfront um, cost to you. They just take a cut of whatever people give you. But the way it works is it's basically... Um, a kind of like um, a crowdsourcing, but it's ongoing. So people will basically give you a donation for every piece of new, whatever, every new creation that you put out, or you can set up where they give you um, basically a monthly tip. And in exchange, you give them extra access to you or behind the scenes content or just little perks and bonuses like that. Maybe ex an extra exclusive song or story or something. And so that's a really um, great way to um, build an income stream there. Um, a good example um, off the top of my head who does really well at this is Peter Hollins and he mm, makes yeah. um, acapella music. And yeah, I think he makes like almost a, or at least a huge portion of his income comes from, from Patreon. Um, at least it did initially. He probably, he probably has other income streams now. And so yeah, that's a really legitimate way um, to, to build an income there. And you can just, you know, do the simple math on if I have X number of members, I'll be making roughly this much money per month or whatever. And so that's a great way um, to build out an income stream there. And that takes us to the fifth income stream, which is teaching. And this is where that YouTube channel comes into. But um, this is a, a really, really great way to, to monetize and bring in another stream of income for your creative business. And, um, you might have heard the expression that those who can't do teach, and maybe this was the case, um, a couple decades ago, but it's totally not the case anymore. And if you look online, right, um, there's definitely a lot of people, um, teaching that maybe have never, have or d never done or achieved things before, um, but there's tons of people out there that are are teaching legitimate skills that they know how to do and now are turning around and monetizing it. So one example is Chris Fox again. So he did, you know, start out just writing his stories, his um, fantasy and sci-fi stories. And then he started creating out a book series on actually teaching authors how to kind of do the same things that he's done. And so he has this whole book series. Now I think he even has an info um, course now, an information course that you can buy. And so he's building out an entire, like basically uh, another big stream of income there. And in fact, um, a lot of times you can find that teaching can actually surpass the income you can make just from actually selling your <laughs> art. So that is, that's a huge industry right now, information, selling information. This is the information yes. age after all. So that could be, yeah, putting out books or a course. Um, or a YouTube channel. So, um, so Kelly, um, yeah, I mean, you could consider that digital. I would consider it teaching because um, that's really the best way to grow a YouTube channel is to 
be teaching something. Well, there's, I mean, there's really, um, there's really three ways to grow a, a YouTube channel that actually grows a following. And so number one would be to teach. The other way is to entertain. So like Mr. Beast, right? He, he, his whole channel is entertainment or, you know, ins pressure. inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those are, so entertainment is, it was harder for most people to do because that requires a lot of, a lot of skill and, and talent and, and time to develop all that to make an actually entertaining channel. So the, the easiest place for most people to start is um, to be teaching something. So, um, and a YouTube channel is a great platform to use for, for teaching people. So um, if you're, yeah, so if you're a writer, you can create a YouTube channel where you're teaching people about writing and then maybe even get a more specific and you teach how to write in the specific genre that you're writing in. And that's can, that's how you can kind of help yourself stand out, right? Because you might think, well, there's so much competition. How do I stand out? Well, you that's where you kind of start out initially niching down and saying, I'm going to focus on this specific genre of writing. And then you become a big fish in a small pond versus a small fish in a big pond. So that's a really great question. There's also vlogging, right? That counts. That's a right. That's a that's third. that falls under entertainment. And that's, like, okay. that's a harder that's a harder thing to start out with. Um, although people have done that for sure. It's, it's just harder because people aren't searching necessarily on vlogs as much as they might be searching. Like, how do I do X, Y, Z? So it's easier to be found if you're, if you're creating content that is something people that are, are going to find through search and is educational and teaching. But, um, it's not to say you can't break out with a vlog, but that's a little bit more, more challenging, but that's a whole other subject, how to grow on YouTube <laughs> and how to teach and everything. And that's actually um we have a whole membership site on on teaching that on how to create your own information brand how to create your own brand where you're actually teaching somebody something and you offer products um information products or, or even physical products to people and so um that's actually um our membership is called the adventure brand coaching community um so if you're interested in learning more about that just leave a comment below um because that's actually what um, I do full time is to, is teaching people how to grow an online business, um, specifically an information online business. So this whole um, fifth step teaching, that's um, that's what I do full time. And then, um, but this can totally apply to teaching a skill as well. In fact, that's what I'm also doing um, with my second business, um, which is Orpheus Audio Academy. So I'm creating music, but I'm also teaching how to create music to other people. So I have a, a blog and a, and a brand centered around teaching how to produce electronic music and grow a music fan base. Yeah, if you're wondering, he's kind of a jack of all trades. <laughs> all right. So is that, that, yeah, is, that's all any, five streams. No, um, I had I had my own personal questions. Um, so I was going to ask, um, would you do you have to do all five? You have to have all five of these streams going in order to be successful? No, you don't. You definitely don't have to have them all to be successful. Um, like I mentioned, I think uh, Peter Holland's just focused on Patreon. That was kind of his main focus. And he's probably making um, YouTube ad, uh, YouTube ad revenue now as well, but, um, especially starting out, you don't want to focus on trying to build all these at the same time. You want to focus on one at a time. And even there it's, um, like we talked about in the beginning, it's, 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 it's going to be hard to really monetize until you have a large enough audience. And so that starts with, you know, publishing, that your creative content, putting out books, putting out music, and then building your email list. So that's what we talked about in episode one was how email list is so foundational. So um, building up your email list. So that's what we, we made that mistake was launching our um, shop too soon. And we were even in like this coaching um, group on, on Facebook, Facebook group for this um, coaching, how to grow your music business. And they even told us, like, you know, I said, we had, you know, we have this many people on our email list, which wasn't that many. And they're like, is it too soon to start a, a store? And they're like, no, go ahead and start a store. But 
Um, we were using Shopify, which you have to pay for that monthly, and we weren't <laughs> able to cover our costs. So we launched that too soon. Um, so we yeah. were doing we were Shop- a WooCommerce kind of, shop, though. Shop- Shopify is kind of mm-hmm. now a comical thing now. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> we are going to be setting up a, a WooCommerce shop, though. Um, and I'll probably document myself, um, record myself building that shop on my Orpheus Audio Academy um, website. Um, since it's, it will be a music shop. So if you're interested in that, um, definitely um, check out my YouTube channel, which is just Orpheus Audio Academy, and you can see me do that once I, I do that here in the near future. Um, but the first place to start is just growing that audience. And so start with that first. Don't You don't have to worry so much about the marketing or the monetizing. That kind of comes later. But it's good to know, um, to see the plan, to see where you're going, and to know that, hey, this is how I'm going to monetize. Whereas when I was like a teen writer and I was, it just seemed so daunting. Like, how am I ever going to make money from this? Are people, I just have to, I don't even know where to start. So this is kind of a gummy, a good roadmap to go towards. And so then you'll start, once you build that fan base, you might actually get people saying, hey, I want a t-shirt for this. I want, or I want this or I want that. And that's when you know it's time to create something. And then you can gradually add in the other streams as well. Yeah, so by the way, I forgot to mention, now is our uh, Q&A time. <laughs> yes. So if you have any, <laughs> any questions, feel free to post any them questions below. at all. Or if this inspired you to do anything or made you feel overwhelmed, just leave a comment. Um, yeah, I would definitely say, especially with the physical products, like pulling your email list or your audience, wherever they are at, and asking them what they would be interested in is definitely very helpful. So you don't go create something and you wasted all that time and mm-hmm. nobody buys it. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's, yeah. We wouldn't, there's so, we wouldn't know what yeah. that's like. <laughs> yeah, we could do like several episodes on like each of these. So that's. What not to do. <laughs> there's definitely a lot more to dive, dive into that we can't cover in just one half yeah. hour live stream. Mm-hmm. Again, this is kind of just like, you know, overview and eventually we'll we'll get deeper into some of these mm-hmm. things yeah so that's what we're doing with this show. We're, we're trying to tackle different subjects to see what people like and see what people want to hear more of so if you want to hear more mm-hmm. about something wants to dive deeper into something or if there's something you're you're wondering about you want us to cover just let us know in the comments i feel like i had one more question i was gonna ask oh what would you say would be the easiest uh, stream to tap into first. I think I know um, the this. <laughs> it's probably going to be digital. That's the easiest place to start because you got no overhead or, or very low overhead costs. And it's just the easiest way to deliver to market. Um, it's just going to be your actual profit margins are going to be very small because you can't charge very much for digital. Or like if you're streaming on music on, on Spotify, you're only making like um, 0.004 cents per stream. So it's really low. We've made, we've made $12 so far from our streaming. Yay! Um, so, um, over basically a year over the class of, course of a year, basically. We've made $12 um, over a year. Yeah. So it's a dollar a month. Yes. yes. But, you guys celebrate every small right. thing. Mm-hmm. Every small yeah. We thing. haven't been doing much marketing when we were doing, actually pushing <laughs> trying to actively work out in our streams we were getting a lot more but then we've kind of gotten busy and haven't really been able to promote our music but um yeah same thing with books right um that's the easiest way to put on an ebook but again you're not going to make very much per every individual ebook so you gotta really either sell sell a lot of volume right so All right. Looks like Kelly has another question. She says, currently, I'm trying to get a good audience. Any tips on how to gain more people for an email list following? So, yeah, a great way to do this is to offer a book for free or a first chapter for free. And then um, people can then get that by joining your email. So they sign up through and um, give you their email in order to get that um that book or that chapter from you. And then as far as like finding an audience for that, um, a good book, um, a good book to read on this is called 
Reader Magnets, I believe is what it's called. I think the author is Neil Stevenson. Um, and so he talks about putting out a book on Amazon for free. And you're going to get a lot more downloads when the book is for free versus even if it's like 99 cents, you're going to get like 10 times the number of downloads if it's um, for free. So it's putting out that book for free. Um, maybe you'd reach out to different blogs or other influencers in the particular genre that you write on and say, hey, my book's for free. Maybe Facebook groups or whatever your reader is, right? Find out who your ideal reader is and where they're hanging out online and you let them know, hey, my book's for free, go download it. And then in that book, um, maybe in the like the forward material and then at the end of the book, mention that, hey, if you go to my website at this link, um, you can get the sequel for free or something. I'll send you the sequel for free. And then they, when they go there, they can put in their email address to get that. And so then once they put in their email address, um, now you've got them on your email list and then you just automate, you, you can set it up using a tool like ConvertKit, which is what we use um, to then automatically deliver that digital, the digital version of the sequel to them. So now um, that's a way you can really, you know, grow your, your email list because you're getting all these people saying, Hey, this book's for free. It's in a genre I like. Um, so I'm going to try it out cause it's free. And then once they open the book and they, if it's a good book, they're going to want the sequel. And so then they, um, obviously they're going to want the next book for free. So they give you your, um, their email address in order to get that book. Um, so yeah, so that's what, um, I believe the author's name is Neil Stevenson, what he talks about in his book, Reader Magnets. And so that's one way to do it. Um, another way is like the, the influencer marketing approach, reaching out to um, people that blogs or a podcast or YouTubers or someone who's um, that you know your ideal reader follows and seeing if you can collaborate with them in order to have them review or give away um, when it, your, your books for free or something like that. So um that's a good place to start. And um, again, that can be a little daunting because that's two books you're giving away, right? So that's where the creating that, that consistent writing time and just putting out the volume is kind of important there. Um, but if you don't have that, another place to start is like giving away a free chapter. And um, Kingdom Pen. Kingdom Pen's a resource for that. You could... Um, reach out to Kingdom Pen and say, hey, I want to give away a free chapter of my book and we could um, post it on Kingdom Pen. And then at the end, you can say, hey, join, you know, join your email list to get the rest of the book. So let me know if that, hopefully that answered your question and, and made some sense. Um, and if you're wanting to get started with um, building your email list, we um, recommend going to kingdompen.org slash convertkit. Um, there you can get a, a free account of ConvertKit. It's free up to your first 1,000 subscribers. Um, and this is also our affiliate link. So if you do end up um, purchasing it, we'll earn an, a commission at no extra cost to you. It's just something that you know we'd appreciate um, as it helps uh, support Kingdom Pen. But if you have something else that you're using or you, you don't like ConvertKit, that's totally fine as well. All right. She said that was super helpful. Thanks again. All right. Awesome. Great. Cool. Well, thanks so much for commenting too. It's really great to, yeah. <laughs> to have a conversation. That's why we wanted to do, do a show live so we could have kind of a back and forth. And, um, but it doesn't look like we have any other comments. So I guess we'll wrap this up. Anything you want to add Haley? Um, I was just going to say like with the whole, you know, reader, reader magnet. I mean, that goes, that goes for any, any type of, um, art, art form yeah. or even business. Which makes, which, yeah. Which reminds me, another thing you could do is you could run ads. That's what we did for our music. That's how we, um, built our initial, uh, music fan base up to around 300 subscribers, um, before we ran out of budget to run ads. Um, <laughs> so what we were doing was we would, um, figure out what other, um, what were similar music artists to our music. So if, for example, if people liked this band, then they'd probably also like our music. And then we set up a Facebook ad and we targeted people who liked those bands that were similar to us. And we had a, a video that had a little clip of our song and we said, Hey, um, 
click here to get this song for free. So then people would sign up and then we'd send them um, that song for free. And then they'd be on our email list in exchange for their email. So that's how we grew our um, email list. And we did pretty well with that. We were yeah. growing pretty fast when we were running ads, but we haven't run ads for a while. Um, basically since the pandemic. <laughs> so <laughs> we've uh, kind of took up our ad budget. But um, so that's another great, great way too. Um, but of course that requires, you have to have some kind of budget to be able to spend on ads to build your list. Uh, great question. And um, does Kingdom Pen have merch available for, for purchase? I kind of mentioned this um, earlier was we did have a shop and um, uh, I've asked Aaron and Kathleen if they are planning on, on bringing that shop back and they said they are they are planning on bringing it back soon. So they're, um, as part of the, the website rebuild, I guess it, um, it, it, we haven't gotten around to putting the shop back up. So, but they it's said been, been a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> they've been, then, they have been, right, they have been doing yeah. a lot. Right. Their main focus has been on just, yeah, getting lots of great content published and Which they have been um, doing YouTube that. YouTube channel. And if you haven't seen Kathleen's videos on the YouTube channel, those Kathleen. are yeah. outstanding. Not yeah. only, yeah, super informative, but they're also really entertaining. So mm -hmm. uh, we talked about entertaining being difficult to achieve, um, but she's managed to do that. So she has both teaching and um, also entertainment in her videos. So go to the Kingdom Pen, go to look up Kingdom Pen TV on YouTube and be sure to subscribe and check out the videos. Actually, we're streaming this on our YouTube channel as well. So um, yeah, that's kind of been the main focus um, so far was just, you know, getting lots of great content out um for you guys and then i think we'll be having the shop will be returning soon so you'll be able to, to buy those super awesome uh, kingdom pen t-shirts and hopefully we'll, um and mugs and maybe we'll add some more th items as well so if there's other kingdom pen merch you want just let us know in the comments as well all right i guess that's gonna wrap it up for us so mm -hmm. thanks again for watching and you have been watching the Creative Entrepreneur Show. And let us know what other topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Otherwise, have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.